What's going on guys? My name is Noel. Today I want to talk to you about something that has kind of piqued my interest over the last few years. It's something that I kind of just noticed through actually a picture and I just became obsessed with. I wanted to learn more about it. I wanted to buy several of them. Um, so today we're going to talk about cowboy boots and how they fit into the zeitgeist of American fashion overall within the last 10 or so years. Cowboy boots can be really interesting because they can be very gimmicky or they can kind of just be very meme worthy depending on how they're worn or jokes made about them or just any ideas about cowboy boots overall. But what really interested me and what is driving me to make this video and to do this research was to learn more about how designers in high fashion over the last 10 years have taken cowboy boots, used them in their collections, and the themes and purpose behind doing so. We've definitely seen a resurgence over the last, I'd say about five years in cowboy boots as a trend. Obviously there's many figures in music or fashion that wear cowboy boots frequently and make it part of their look and kind of adopt that style that we see all over social media. Some of them include obviously Lil Nas X, Lenny Kravitz, Lucas Sabat, but actually one thing that really interested me, one picture that I saw that drove my interest into cowboy boots and how they could be worn as a modern fashion item was this picture right here of Noah Dillon featured in Vogue. For those of you who don't know, Noah Dillon is a photographer as well as a musician in the band The Help. He's also a uh, part of the duo with Lucas Abbott for Hot Mess, which is a creative company. But this picture was really interesting to me. I'd never seen cowboy boots tucked into skinny jeans, never mind worn with a Vetmont bomber. I thought this was really crazy and almost revolutionary. I know that it wasn't worn to be a gimmick um, like it you may think it to be. I know that Noah is from somewhere in Colorado and grew up in an environment around actual cowboys. So that's kind of where this came from. This was just part of his wardrobe. But I kind of want to go into the deeper reasons behind why cowboy boots become a trend and why designers use them in parts of their collections. So first off, we're going to talk about the Maison Margiela Spring Summer 2009 show. This was actually the 20th anniversary show for the house and it was Martin Margiela's last collection before he retired. To give a brief background on the show, it was very nostalgic and it put forward a lot of the styles and signatures that Martin had over the 20 years of the label. The show had a lot of themes of anonymity as a sign for power of women, which was just kind of a theme for the brand overall. It also had a lot of lightheartedness of fashion that was also played with by Martin. Fashion was never supposed to be so serious and strict. Side note for any more information about Maison Margiela or any other designers that you might want to know a little more about, I'm going to link in the description the homie Bliss Foster. Bliss is a huge resource for the fashion community, people trying to find more information. I myself has learned so much from Bliss. Bliss is amazing at keeping in contact with his followers, uh, staying in contact with people on his Patreon that you can subscribe to and just connect with tons of other people who are like-minded in the fashion community. But seriously, if you want any more information on in-depth runway analysis or anything like that, please go check out Bliss's YouTube channel. But anyways, I recognize the use of cowboy boots in this Margiela collection from the latest documentary, Margiela in His Own Words. If you haven't seen it, it is kind of difficult to find because it's not out in the US yet. I actually got it through Bliss Foster's Patreon on someone shared it in a Google Drive link. I think it was only released to the UK or parts of Europe or something like that, but that's how I watched it. So here you can see that looks 10 and 11 are actually the only parts of the show where you can see these cowboy boots being worn. Even in both looks, they're exactly the same blue white gradient. Both outfits worn with the cowboy boots include what appear to be a white turtleneck full bodysuit. The interesting detail is that there's blue denim imprints onto the white outfits of the women when you look closely. It almost looks like a denim blue jacket or a pair of jeans were rubbed off on the white garments. This imprinting was a big theme for the show, and if I had to interpret the meaning in these two looks myself, I take a rough guess that it's another women empowerment theme. It shows that women can wear white, clean, chic outfits, but then also let their hair down, be a little more casual, and wear some blue denim. Next, I want to talk about Hedy Slimane and some examples of his work during his time at Saint Laurent as well as his debut collection for Celine. 
Hedy Slimane is obviously very well known for his slim, dark, rock nostalgic silhouettes. With that, in one of his last shows being the Spring Summer 15 show for Saint Laurent, we see a very Western Americana influence. Saint Laurent is obviously very known for the wide boot and other boot styles, but we see more obvious adaptations of the traditional cowboy boot in a lot of these looks. Then moving into his Celine debut show, Hetty stated that instead of the brand continuing to be a woman's wear label, as it was infamously under Phoebe Philo, who preceded Hetty Slimane, all of the clothes would be offered as unisex moving forward. I think that this ties in well with the idea that the cowboy boot is unisex as well. Most of the Hetty Slimane collections during this Saint Laurent era kind of take you back and embody this nostalgia. They make you feel like you are in a different time period. This is kind of his way of paying homage to his roots or past memories or anything that he's been a fan of pretty much throughout his life. This timelessness is also another ideal that ties in with cowboy boots and the variety of other designs from Hetty. This timelessness and feeling that you can be in different eras of time just based on the style of clothing that you wear and the emotions that they make you feel is also something that ties the cowboy boot to Hedy Slimane's designs. So continuing to move chronologically, I wanna move into the spring summer 2017 Hood by Air show by Shane Oliver. In my opinion, Shane Oliver is one of the best designers of the 21st century. I would love to see Shane come back with more Hood by Air collections or at least see him do something in a large fashion house, even though I know he's doing his thing at Colmar right now. Regardless, the flip of gender norms was a big theme of this show and the brand overall. While showcasing several of the pieces that supplemented this theory, like a blazer that was actually presented as a zipper jumpsuit, these mirrored cowboy boots were definitely one of the most viral things that came out of this show. They most certainly drive home the ideology of symbolic unwearable clothing. These are by far one of the coolest cowboy boots I have ever seen. Obviously they're so different and I don't even know how your foot would fit into them. I've actually been asked when I've shown these to people if I would actually wear them and I would 100% wear these. They're just so hard to find. Moving on, we jump to the Raph Simmons show for Calvin Klein, 205 West 39th, New York City for fall 2017. And then we can also talk about his collection for same brand, but spring, summer 2018. Just to note, so far all of the shows we have covered that have shown us cowboy boots as high fashion examples have fallen into the spring, summer category. Maybe just an interesting note, or maybe that's for a reason. These two collections by Raph under the new Calvin Klein branch were filled with a lot of his ideas and memories of America. With that as an obvious theme, it's pretty clear that we can find rancher style dress shirts, Wall Street interpreted suits, and then obviously cowboy boots. Something that's interesting is that Raph presents the cowboy boots in both their traditional form, but also different adaptations. These change throughout the seasons, whether it's the material or the color, there's so many different varieties of these boots that Raph did. Also, the boots are used so heavily throughout the shows that you see them styled with pieces you wouldn't usually expect. For example, you do see them with the rancher shirts and dress pants, but then you also see them with the big boxy suits, which is interesting. Raph's use of the boots continues to show the versatility and that cowboy boots are actually a footwear staple beyond their just traditional utilitarian roots. The final collection we're going to talk about is the Off-White Pre-Fall 2019 show. Featured in this show is the viral sensation Four Walking Cowboy Boots as well as these frilled western style boots. Once again, we see a designer taking on their own version of Americana. The collection itself is titled Do You Cheer? And Virgil says that he was referring to different sketches or memories he had from high school. This makes the title an obvious giveaway that these boots are actually symbols for pom-poms. As a bonus, we can also see that this piece by Virgil, which appears to be his classic Louis Vuitton sneakers merged with a cowboy boot upper. The first time I saw these, I was blown away. I didn't know what to think. I didn't know if it was just a meme. I didn't know if an Instagram account photoshopped these. But when I saw that Virgil had actually posted them on his story, I was so gassed and I wanted these so bad. But then I purchased the Figures of Speech Special Edition, which details all of the work he has done 
done up until now and those are in there and they're listed as a sample so it kind of sucks because i don't think these will ever come out so now i want to move into the reason that cowboy boots come and go as a trend why certain designers use them and kind of what the general feeling is about them why people consume them and things like that so without this being too cringy, I actually found a really cool article on Fashionista titled, Why Are Cowboy Boots Trending in Fashion Right Now? This was actually from June 1st, 2018. This was a little bit after I recognized um, this cowboy boot trend and how it was being used by designers or just being worn by influencers on Instagram and things like that. This article covers a lot of things that we already talked about. So versatility of cowboy boots, the unisex nature, things like that, feelings of nostalgia obviously people love the idea of nostalgia even if you're not super embedded into fashion we can see that through thrifting people love to thrift even if they couldn't even name five designers off the top of their head it's just really that feeling of getting something that was from a different time but still gives you that emotion that you're looking for when you're wearing something that was before you. But really the most interesting and impactful piece of information I got from this article was from Professor Laurel Wilson, who is a professor of textiles at the University of Missouri. A quote here from Laurel Wilson says, the times we tend to see a cowboy dress appearing in fashion are times when America is either ultra patriotic or under stress. Laurel goes on to say that the style myth of Americana continues to thrive given the epically low international approval ratings of the states right now. For what it's worth, Wilson says that European, particularly German and Japanese tastemakers have always been fascinated by cowboy culture. Finally, Wilson is quoted as saying that the wave we're seeing has to do with this America first kind of thing. She says that it's sad because a lot of what we're seeing with American things popping up are due to the xenophobia that is going on. This is really interesting and kind of heavy to think that the political unrest and all of the things that are wrong with our country at the moment are causing something to be a fashion trend. It's weird to think that sales of a certain style of item or a certain item can go up for people who want to feel more patriotic or overly patriotic or are radical or things like that. It's kind of tough to wrap your head around. You don't want to feel like you're falling into that category. Like, oh no, I'm someone who buys cowboy boots. Am I falling into that category of those people who are overly patriotic or xenophobic? But what I think people should do is just look a little deeper into the reasons behind why certain things are trending, the history behind certain graphics, logos, silhouettes, just anything like that. There's a lot deeper meaning to fashion than a lot of people realize, just mainly in part of a lot of people are not interested in fashion, which is fine. A lot of people just purchase fast fashion items, but a lot of fashion does come with historical context. And I think it's important to pay attention to that and kind of understand why things are the way that they are in such a difficult world to understand and kind of grasp. I would have never known anything about this with cowboy boots until I read this article and I've been obsessed with them for the last two or three years. So that's all today, guys. I really hope that you learned something. I learned a lot when I was researching this. I wanna try to do more videos like this. I'm not gonna dedicate this channel to just doing this sort of content. I wanna to continue to do things about photography, maybe things about books, things about art, but I definitely want to try to make more videos like this in the future. Let me know in the comments down below if you did learn something, if there's things you wanna learn more about that you want me to make more videos about or just anything of that nature. I'd really love your feedback. The love and support that I've gotten so far has been amazing. Although it's a very small channel and it's not a ton of subscribers, just seeing the amount of people and views and everything that I've gotten already from being so small has meant a lot and I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. Just as a not so shameless plug, the zine that I talked about in my past video is still for sale. I actually have sold almost all of them. So there's only 11 copies left. If you're interested in purchasing, that link is below. It's natureversusnurture.company.site. And I also have a video on my channel that goes in depth about that zine if you wanna learn a little bit more about it before you buy it. If you want to see more content from me, photography, fashion styling, things like that, that's a little more personal, you can check out my Instagram right here. I'll also have that link below. Thank you so much again, guys. I'll see you in the next video.